Okay, Alberghi High School um, trade class. Uh, we move on to the next page. We're actually going to use the law of science. We're going to put it into practice. Uh, you just start by uh, it says it says solve the following triangles. If you remember, if we solved the following triangles before, we had to list all the parts and find them. We'll just start by drawing a triangle. A, B, and C. Side A is 10. Angle A is 42, angle B is 80, side B, side C. So we're going to list them all here, A, B, and C. Side A, side B, side C. Angle A is 42. That was easy. It's given. Angle C, 80. It's given. How do I find angle C? Yes, the sum of all three, you have to add 180. So if you subtract 42 and 80 from 180, you'll end up with 58. So that's angle C. So we're done with the angles. But the sides, we're only given one right now, and that is side A is equal to 10. So I need to find B and C. Now, are you given an angle and its opposite side? Yes, you're given angle A and side A. So therefore, we can use the law of sines. If we weren't, then you have to use something else. In fact, if you look at the uh, decision tree notes, your lifeline that I gave to you, if you flip to that, uh, the first one says if you're given all three angles, it's not impossible. It's not possible to find the sides. That that's an impossible problem. So there's no solution. But the second one we're looking at is where you're given two angles and then the other side. Not uh, two angles and the included side, but Two angles and then another side. And if we want to be able to find that and solve for that, um, then, then we got to go to work. So uh, let's give this a shot. Solve the following triangles. We're going to use the law of sines. We're going to set it up. The sine of A, which is 42, divided by side A, which is 10 is equal to the sine of B, which is 80, divided by side B, which is unknown. As you can see, we have a proportion. We have two ratios that are equal to one another. All we have to do is cross, multiply, and solve. If you take out your calculator, uh, make sure that you're working in degrees, not radians. And Once you see that you're working in the correct mode, We'll just find the sine of 42. Sine of 42 is 0 0.6691. 0 0.6691 times B is equal to, and we take the sine of 80 times 10. 10 times the sine of 80. And I get 9.8481. 9.8481. Nine Okay, now that we have that information, we can divide both sides by 0.6691. We do that on our calculator. We get 14.72. 14.72 for side B. And there we go, we have one of the sides. Now, in order to find side C, a lot of people may want to use a Pythagorean theorem. But why can't you use a Pythagorean theorem in this case? Yes, because you do not have a right angle. Pythagorean theorem only works if you have right triangles, which we don't in this case. So we go back to the law of sines. Uh, you can use sine of 42 over 10 or sine of 80 over 14.72. Either one. I'm going to use the first one I started with, sine of 42 over 10 is equal to, now we use the sine of C. So sine of 58 over C. That's what I'm trying to solve for. Um, sine of 42, I already know, is 0 0.6691 times C is equal to sine of 58 times 10. 10 times the sine of 58 is 8.48. Zero three. 
I know you guys might be wondering why we're going to four decimal places, but that will become more obvious as you're solving for angles later on. Divided by 0.6691 is 12.67. 12.67 is side C. As you look, you have angle A and the opposite side, your smallest angle and your smallest side. You have your largest angle in side B, or angle B, and side B is your largest side. Those correspond. That's a way that you can check to see if you're doing it accurately. So that takes care of example A. Uh, we can move on to a, a different one now. And uh, mine is currently labeled. I'm going to erase this to, to make a little bit more room for myself. <laughs> but on this next one, you have B is equal to 12 degrees, C is equal to 27 degrees, and then C is 10. Uh, I'm going to change that to A is 10. If I didn't change it on your notes, my apology. I'm finding some mistakes here, things I meant to do differently. So let's go through this. Uh, we set up the triangle. We have A, B, and C. doesn't matter where you put A, B, and C. We just we need to show where things are at so we make sure that we get the right sides over the right angles, so on and so forth. Angle A, we don't know. We know B is 12. We know C is 27. And we know side A is 10. Well, what's different about that problem? If you look, you have an angle, a side, and an angle. And on your decision tree, the angle, side, angle tells us that we still use the law of sines. So we know we can use that. But as you look at this problem, you can see that you don't have an angle on its opposite side. You have angle B, but no side B. You have angle C, but no side C. You have side A, but you don't have angle A. Fortunately for us, angle A is very easy to come up with. So A, B, and C. We know C is 27 degrees. We know that B is 12 degrees. If you add those and subtract from 180, we come up with 141. So 141 is going to be angle A. Now I know my drawing doesn't look like A is 141, but that's okay. Side A, side B, side C. I know side A is 10. I know side B, don't know that. Side C, I got to figure out. So um, now we have an angle on its opposite side. Uh, right here, uh, 141 and 10. Uh, just a check for understanding at this point. Um, angle A, 141, that's going to be our largest angle. So all of the other sides are going to be have, have to be less than what value? Yeah, all the other sides are going to be out, have to be less than 10. Since A is 141, that's the biggest angle. Uh, it's going to have the biggest side. So we just set this up the exact same way. Uh, we head through it. We say that the sign... Oh, doesn't want to write very well. Try that again. We say the sign of angle A, which is 141, divided by 10 is equal to the sine of B, the sine of 12, divided by side B. We cross, multiply, and solve. For those of you who are getting a little bit faster on your calculators, um, you know there there is an easier way to do this. As you begin to cross, multiply, you'll notice, I'll do this on the calculator for you so everybody can see. You notice that you're going to be dividing eventually by the sine of 141. So if you want to take 10 times the sine of 12, and then simply divide by the sine of 141, we get 3.30. 3.30 for B. So. You notice if you just set it up correctly, kind of walk yourself through the steps, you don't have to write down everything in between. On the first one, example A, I approximated all the decimals. If you need to do that, go ahead. But if you don't have to, then, then don't. Save yourself some time. 
Uh, I can set up the next one. I need to use sine of C. So I have the sine of 141. I'm going to continue to use that over 10 is equal to the sine of angle C. It looks like it's 27 degrees uh, divided by C. Again, on my calculator, uh, as we said before, we know we're going to end up dividing by the sine of 141. So 10 times the sine of 27 divided by the sine of 141. And I get 7.21. A quick check, does that match with my findings? Um, yeah, it looks like side B um, is the smallest and corresponds with the smallest angle. So my, my answers are reasonable, reasonable solutions. And that's the basics of the law of signs. It works out quite nicely. Piece of cake to get through. Nice way to solve triangles. As you look at your sheet, uh, you can see that so far, angle, 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 you don't have any side. It's impossible to solve for that. You, you can't get any idea what, how, how big the sides are if you're not even given one of them. But angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, these two pieces, we know that we use the law of sines. There is another one that we use the law of sines for, and that's right here. But that's a little bit more difficult one. We're going to have to get to that later on. So uh, you should be ready now to go through your assignment. Um, if you simply look at these problems, uh, you can do section 3.1a. Uh, except for these two right here, it looks like 29 and 30, I think, that those involve area, which is going to be on your next video. So we'll start that in a second.